In step five, we will show how to use Urbano in a generative approach. Suppose this is our site boundary, and we want to redesign all the street networks and buildings. We will use the original OSM map and this new boundary curve. We use this cluster to first replace our site with a dense grid, pretending people can go anywhere in any direction. We also remove all the buildings on our site, and we construct a coordinate system indicating all the possible locations to place amenities. These settings will be used in all the following generative examples. In first example, we will assume a use case that we want to construct a more efficient network on our site. We build the model using the new network and the surrounding buildings. Then we can do the simulation based on the new model, and then visualize the street heads. The colored map here tells us where are the routes that people will be taking most frequently. In this case, the routes all seem towards one direction because this is the only place where all destinations are located. We can further dispatch the generated streets by modifying the threshold of street hits magnitude. This could be our base map that we start to draw our new network. This is the result given this case study. We can partition our site into blocks according to this generated street networks. Notice that if we change the travel model from pedestrian to bike, the generated result will also be changed based on biker's travel route. The previous example is based on the default settings. What if we want to propose a pedestrian boulevard somewhere, and we want the generated results be responsive to that proposal? In example two, we will start to integrate our design ideas into the generated framework. We first bake all the streets and link them back into two groups. It separates the proposed boulevard from the other streets, and we will create metadata with the key pedestrian routing factor and the value of 0.8. We then embed this new metadata into the previous model and do the simulation with the travel mode pedestrian. By visualizing the street hits again, we can start to see the generated results updated based on the proposed pedestrian boulevard. There are some parts of the boulevard not effective enough. There are also some places start to form major traffic nodes. However, not all boulevard proposals are going to work. For instance, if we propose a boulevard like this, this will be its street hits results. We can see that this boulevard is not attracting pedestrians at all. So far, we've only been generating street networks based on existing surroundings. However, the network is supposed to change according to new amenities on the site. In this example, we will include four amenities on these four coordinates. Compared to the previous results, Although the overall direction is still towards the old activity center, its generated new paths go into the new destinations. We can also make decisions about amenity locations based on the network that is already defined. We can use this coordinate system for placing amenities and conduct the simulation by amenity types. By analyzing the building hits based on this model, we can visualize what are the places best for this type of amenity. We can then strategically locate certain types of amenity in the area where they will potentially receive the highest footfall. Finally, as you can see in all the previous examples, the generative framework is adaptive to different design goals and conditions. You can modify the decision-making process and simulation parameters according to the specific needs in your own projects.